This is the Brightline Miami Central Station project. It's in the heart of Miami, right in the new downtown. It's really the next-gen infrastructure that Miami needed to bring itself into the 21st century. It's a relatively tight site in downtown Miami. One of the things with coordinating all of the heavy beams that are being positioned on the piers is that we need to be able to pull the delivery trucks right up off of the tracks, basically, and be able to access those with some heavy lift cranes. We had planned it out, but it was really simple that the truck will come in, crane will pick, and then set it up. But we didn't realize that there were so many obstacles on the street. We thought that let's use the scanner and then get the whole area around and bring it to the mall. Once we did that, then we realized that we're talking a whole different scenario here. There is a lot of obstruction. The crane that we picked earlier were not valid because the plan changed completely. Once we realize that there is a need for the scanning at this point, we bring in the scanner, do the scanning at the site, and it usually takes about an hour, depending on how much data we want to collect, hour to two hour. Then we bring that data back to the office and then stitch it together in scene software. Using that data that we collected, the point cloud, we bring it back into our model, which we use Revit right now, and then we bought the scan data in the model. Based on that, we create generic model based on the scan data. That's how it gives us a 3D model off of all those scan point data, and then we can use those to do whatever the logistic works that we have to do. Once we got past that, it was a lot easier for me to schedule the equipment, sizing, not only that, but it gave us a much better idea of crane paths, where we could sit, where we couldn't sit. And once we got all this information together, it went off without a hitch. We came in, we set the girders, had no delays for anything, logistics or crane setups where we got there and said, hey, we didn't realize this was here and we can't reach over or can't get by it. We had all that information in hand and we were able to be very, very successful. One of the biggest challenges we had on this project was the embeds. There's about five to 6,000 embeds and all of it is incorporated in our concrete structures. The steel embeds are fabricated steel components that we cast in with the concrete. When we pour a shear wall or a column, for instance, ultimately there's a lot of steel in this job, so the steel is gonna have to interface with the concrete. Where the steel and concrete interface, they need something to weld to, or bolt to in this case. Once the embeds are placing the concrete, and we strip the formwork. We go out there with the Faro scanner and we scan the concrete structures where it shows the embeds. And we bring it into Faro seam and get all the scans put together. Once that's done, we clean it up and recap. Ultimately, I put it into Revit, where is our main model stored. Then I can compare the actual versus the Aspil, the proposed location. We chose to use the Faro Focus 3D X330 as a 330 meter range, which is important to us. A lot of our jobs are large and because we're so interested in scanning for context, it gives us a lot of the surrounding cityscape that we're looking for. Based on my experiences, concrete's probably the best application of the scanner in my mind. I can see the appeal for GCs wanting to document their work. It carries over for what we want to do. We're using it on the front end side of the job to control or inform our logistics so that we don't get in a bad situation. We're using it to prevent problems in the field. More so, the reason we purchased it was to validate what we've already done. So for as-built conditions, floor flatness, wall plumbness, embed locations, those types of things are really what sold the machine to us. I'm glad that Baker is one of the leading companies in updating technology into construction, and they're actually using scanners, which was integrated a while back into construction, but nobody's really taking the step to bring it into as-built or even pre-con and a lot of stuff that is really helpful on. I'm really proud of being part of Baker Concrete in that sense of taking technology one more step.